Hey everyone, my name is Amor and I help property investors become property developers even if they've got no prior experience. I wanted to talk about the foundations of property development. There are three main things and if you master these three things, you would be able to do any kind of development. It doesn't matter if it's residential or commercial or whatever kind of development that you want to get into, but you master, you spend the time into understanding these three things and putting them together you'll be able to put together any kind of project. So we've got due diligence, feasibility, and funding. And they're all three of them are actually interdependent. Uh, the reason being that you can't do your feasibility unless you've actually done your due diligence. And due diligence is actually made up of three different things. Number one being your market research. Who are you gonna target? Is there a demand for what you're gonna build? Um, they, it answers all sorts of different questions based on um, your end value of the townhouse, what you're going to use as an end value for the townhouse, depending upon the target demographics or the target audience that you're going to um, target. After that market research, you've got site analysis. You went out all the different things that affect your particular site. It could be the contours, it could be the slope, it could be a number of things setbacks uh, the width of the site there are so many different things so if you get your market research right and your site analysis right those three things those two things will actually give you numbers that you have to put in your feasibility the third thing under, under due diligence is your legals are there any legal issues with the site for example there could be some covenants uh, on the site how are they how are you going to handle them or whether or not you need to account for those costs in your feasibility when it comes to feasibility you do your due diligence you come up with all these all the data that that comes from different documents could be your contract of sale could be uh, details about the site could be dial before you dig for example to figure out what's going on on that particular site and your market research or what what actually you're going to build or develop as a product and sell in the market in your feasibility there are three different kinds of feasibility the first one i call the smart feasibility whoops let's just call that sfc well i call it ssc because it's i use a smart feasibility calculator for it but let's just put smart feasibility the other one is your detailed feasibility and the third one is your tracking Your smart feasibility is like a feasibility that you do in under two minutes. The reason for that is that anytime you look at a project, not all the information is available, but you do uh, back of the envelope, so to speak, feasibility to understand what's going on with it. Are there any numbers? Is there any meat in the project, so to speak? Um, is the project fat enough for you to be able to commit to the project? So we do a smart feasibility for that. The second one is a detailed feasibility when you've got all your questions answered from your due diligence, whether it's um, um, uh, quotes and fee proposals from different consultants, uh, the reports that you're gonna need for the project. So once you've got all of that, you map them out on a timeline based on what you think your project is going to take in order to complete. So that timeline and you allocate all those costs in your detailed feasibility. The third one is your tracking feasibility where basically you track everything that you've accounted for month by month. So if you think that in, in the fourth month of the development, you're gonna be spending $40,000 on consultants, you need to track that month by month so that you can keep an eye on the bottom line as the project is progressing. The final thing is your funding. In funding, you've got your finance and you've got a structure have you got enough money to actually cover all the costs of the project these are the kind of questions that you ought to answer when you're looking at your funding where are you going to get it from how much you're going to get it for is it going to be a mezzanine finance and what kind of structure you're going to use is going to is going to impact the kind of finance you can access so these are the three different foundations you master all of this and the best part is they actually happen right at the front of the project so it's not like you you need to actually get into the project to to be able to start answering these questions or start understanding them if you master these these three 
you can do any kind of development and this is what I teach in my in my workshop so if you ever are interested all you have to do is go and download the 65 page document that I've got on pdsblueprint.com that's pdsblueprint.com and I'll see you there